hope you're all well. So there's always quite an air of mystery around the idea of getting a house or whether to stay in halls. I know there's always a load of queries, questions and concerns that prospective students and current students have when looking at where to live. So in today's video I'm going to address all those concerns and hopefully answer some of your guys' questions about accommodation. So the first most obvious question is what is the difference between living in halls and living in a house? So university halls are usually situated on the university campus itself. So at Swansea University we have two campuses, we have Bay Campus and we have Singleton Campus. We have living accommodation on both campuses so it's really convenient, whatever course you do you can just live right next to your lecture theatre. So the first things first is you need to figure out what course you're doing and from that what campus you're on. Once you know that you're in good stead to start picking your accommodation. If you're first year we usually recommend for you to stay on campus. This is mainly because it's a great place to meet friends, it's a really fun experience if you haven't been to university before, obviously you're super close to your lectures so you can just roll out of bed in the morning and be in your lecture theatre. So say if you are first year and you decide to live on campus, you may be asking, well how do I know which block I want to be in? There's so many with so many different options. That's all up to personal preference. You don't actually pick the individual block, you just pick the amenities you want. So whether you want a double bed or an ensuite or a catering card or in a big flat or in a small flat. So I personally wasn't fussed about the size of room I had, but I did really want an ensuite. Obviously I surf, so I want to be able to wash my wetsuit out and my shower and things like that. And I also thought it'd be quite fun to live in a slightly bigger flat because you know, you have more chance of meeting people with the same interest as you. Obviously price is a big factor too so you can see a breakdown of all the different prices. You know what you're getting before you buy it. All the halls on Singleton campus are super close to all the lecture theatres and the main hub of campus. I was personally in Penmine Halls which is a flat of eight and I had so much fun and met some great friends in there. Obviously when you come to pick your accommodation they look at your age and your interests and your course and kind of try and pair you with people who you'll have similar interests with. But for me no one on my floor was 18. Everyone was a year or two or three older so that was really nice for me because I'm a slightly mature student so it was really nice to fit in with people I felt were really my own age. The university definitely have your best interest at heart when trying to match you with people. Now you know a little bit about university halls, you may be going into your second year or third year or fourth year or be a PhD student, master's student or you might just want to live in a house anyway. So now I'm going to talk to you all about housing and where you want to kind of look for housing, which companies you want to go through and my top tips about living in a house. First of all you may be wondering, well I want to live in a house but I have no no idea about Swansea or I've never visited, I have no idea where students live. So here's a map of Swansea, the easiest way to look at it is town is in the middle, this is where all your clubs are, your restaurants, your shops, everything like that is here. And then on the other side you have Singleton campus. So if you study on Singleton you kind of want to live anywhere between town and campus. I personally chose to live close to campus as I found it motivated me a lot more to get up for my 9am in the morning, so I picked Bryn Mill area which is a little kind of subsection of Swansea city. Above Bryn Mill is Uplands, there is a bit more going on here, there's a post office, some restaurants and there's a few bars. It is a bit further from uni but still only about 15 minute walk so it's so easy to get to still. And then you can head the other way and live anywhere between there and town but I think Uplands and Bryn Mill is where most of the students who study on Singleton live. You may be wondering but where do people on Bay campus live? And literally in the same place to be honest, they usually make friends with people on Singleton and they all just want to share a house and live together so they tend to live in the same area. However obviously if you do just have Bay campus friends you might want to get a house slightly closer to Bay campus. I'd say you probably want to be anywhere from like a 10 minute to a 20 to 30 minute walk away. Obviously if you bring a bike that would be really really helpful. There is no parking on campus for day students so you really don't want to rely on a car to drive you from your house to campus if you can. Obviously you can live in town too, there's houses there but it will be slightly further to get to uni. So now you may be wondering well I want to live in a house but who should I live in a house with? And that's also completely up to you, whether you live with people you lived in first year, whether you want to find a whole new set of friends, whether you want to live with strangers, whether you want to put a memo out on Facebook and find people to live with, whether you want to join a society or club and live with people from there. For me personally, because I was in a flat of eight in first year, I then lived with half of those people in second year. So it does come around super quickly, so you do want to be kind of looking at houses Christmas time in your first year and that might seem super soon to kind of know who you want to live with, but pick those people that that you get on really well with, that you don't argue with, that you have things in common and you can see yourself getting on with for the next few years. I know that is really hard though but I promise you it will be alright, things will work out. Once you've decided where you want to live you then need to decide kind of what facilities you want and what kind of house you want to live in. Whether you want double beds in every room, whether you want two big rooms and two small rooms, whether you all want kind of similar size rooms, whether you want a dining room, a living room or whether you're not bothered about that, whether you want a big kitchen, whether you want off-site parking, whether you want on-road parking, a 
garden, there's so many different things you need to kind of sit down with your friends and discuss before kind of looking for houses. Another really important thing to discuss before you decide on a house is the price. You all need to be on the same page with how much you're willing to pay for rent and bills every month. Some houses will have all bills included and I'd really recommend that because then it can just kind of take a stress off your mind. You just pay your landlord and that's that. You don't have to worry about sorting bills out and you also don't have to worry about using too much water or having the heating on one too many days in winter. But once you've all settled on price and your facilities and your location, you then can look for a house, which is so much fun. So you can look online, just do a quick Google search. You look on Zoopla, look at letting agents. The university recommends SAS lettings. They have a really good agreement with them and they know that they have really kind landlords and really high quality housing. So if you're interested in that, definitely look on the university website for SAS lettings. If not, there's an accommodation in Swansea Facebook group and speak to people. People might be moving out of houses they love and be able to recommend you for that house. This is a really hands-on process. You need to bring people up, ask for viewings and you need to do it quite soon. You ideally need to have viewings booked and a house confirmed by like Christmas time. So really get on that process and get the ball rolling as soon as you can. Now you've picked your house, you secured it. How exciting. At this point, go through your contract with a fine tooth comb. I promise you, you'll never regret doing this. Make sure you're okay with every single thing in your contract, how much the contract says you're paying for. Don't just sign it, make sure you read it. I know that sounds such a kind of parent thing to tell you, but honestly, make sure everything in there is really kosher and you don't have any hidden clauses that you later find out about because once you've signed that, that's that. The landlord will then ask for a deposit, which is usually a month's rent or half a month's rent and sometimes a summer retainer, which is basically the holding fee so they don't rent it out over summer. Sometimes they let you move some stuff in, sometimes they don't, but you can't officially move in during your summer retainer period. This is usually just because of insurance issues and things like that. Once you've paid your deposit, you're pretty much ready to move in. I was so excited about moving in. I packed my boxes up weeks before I actually needed to move in. On the day you move in, my biggest, biggest tip to you is to take photos of absolutely everything. Honestly, you can never have too many photos and if you have a group chat for your house, post them all in that so you never lose them too. You wanna take photos of any issue in your room or the house, go around it and take a photo of every paint chip and every spray of carpet. Honestly, I promise you, you will not regret that. There's this whole idea that student landlords can sometimes rip students off or make them pay for things they haven't done and the only way to cover your back will be to have those photos. So once you've taken all the photos, make sure your area is clean. By law, you're entitled to a safe and clean house. And if there's any query about that, speak to your landlord, get it sorted out sooner rather than later, because you don't want to go the whole year with that hanging over your head thinking, oh, I really don't feel safe about that, or the lock on my door isn't quite working, I'll just leave it a few months and then ask the landlord. Get it all sorted out. Often at the beginning of term, the landlords are super willing to help and sort things out. Now you know all about living in halls, accommodation, location, price. I'm going to give you my few top tips about living in a house. So my top tip number one is make friends with your neighbours. They're often students, sometimes they won't be students, but they're people too. Make friends with them, talk to them, get to know them. It's a really exciting time to be part of the community. So pop over, knock on the door, introduce yourself. It's a really good idea. Build a good rapport with your neighbours early on in the year. They'll really thank you for that later on. Second tip, which sounds so boring, but sort your bins out early on. In Swansea, we have a quite different system than I think the rest of the country. At home, I know we have kind of just two wheelie bins. Here, it's not like that at all. It's a two week road so one week we have black bin bags which are general waste alongside pink bags which are plastics they have to be all washed out and you can put your food bin out so week two is for recyclables such as tin cans paper and glass these need to go in two separate bags the paper in one and the glass in cans in others it sounds really complicated but you'll get your head around it you'll get a leaflet through the door which will explain it all to you but just try and get your head around that really early on they will not take bin bags if they are wrong and the seagulls love attacking your bin bag in swansea because we are so close to the sea and they will take advantage of your back bin bags left out and your neighbors won't be too impressed if there's food scattered all over the streets. Maybe put the rotor up on the fridge and buy some separate bins so you get those all sorted out early on. My third tip, which also sounds a bit dull, but coming from two years living in a house is definitely worth it, and that is to get a cleaning rotor. Or to talk about who's gonna clean the communal areas each week or whether you're gonna do it as a whole house. Student houses get dirty and messy very, very quickly. When everyone's coming in and out and washing plates and cooking, things do get messy. And unless you have a rotor or some kind of organized structure to clean, your house will be messy. There's no other way about it. So sort a cleaning rotor out whether it's in pairs or whether it's just individually you do it. I always think it's fun to clean as a bit of a group. In my house at the moment we have eight people living here so we do it in pairs every other week and it's also their job to put the bins out. It works really well and we just keep on top of it. 
otherwise it will just stack up and your house by like the third month will just be really grimy so top tip keep it clean it'll also make you feel a lot less homesick as well if your house is kept clean and tidy just like home so i think that's everything about living in halls living in a house and my last tip and i know this is so cliche but just enjoy it these years go so fast i actually can't believe i'm in my third year right? it makes me really sad these are just such unique enjoyable years when you can just live with your best friends and when else in life can you ever do that definitely relish every moment have movie nights go to the beach of the house together keep your house clean really enjoy living there because it really won't last forever and one day you'll be wishing to be back so anyway i hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you all soon bye